Hey folks, Jordy here for Cinecam.net and welcome back to Creative Wednesday. And you know what else is coming back? School. And some are excited, others not, but one thing we do all enjoy is to prepare for the new school year. Buying new stuff makes us happy, but increasing that dopamine with shopping isn't the only way that you should prepare for school. It's a good time to clean your desk and computer as well. So that's why I'd like to share 16 tips on how you can prepare your computer and get better performance while editing. Now, although I'm not going to attend school anymore, I do feel ready for it again after MSI sends me their brand new Creator P50. I mean, look at this beauty and just the whole desk. The tiny size saves space on my desk and if you keep the box that comes with it, it's even portable. So you get a desktop laptop, a, a lab desk. Now it doesn't matter how boring the homework is as long as I can sit here, I'm good. So big thanks to MSI for sponsoring this video and like always I'm going to scatter some more information about the computer throughout the entire video. Now the P50 has a beautiful brushed metallic chassis that fits perfect in a modern work environment. And in this box it's some incredible hardware which I'll dive into later. Their slogan tech meets aesthetic does apply greatly to this beast. And although a new computer is the best way to get better performance, there are also many things that you can do with with just a few settings to speed up the performance of your computer and inside Premiere Pro or After Effects. So let's get started with the first tip and that is to keep your drives clean. You can use a program called WinDirStat which scans your drive and sorts everything by size. Oftentimes you'll find out that Adobe cache files, downloads or temporary files are eating up your space. I'd run this program once a month and delete a bunch of stuff. And talking about drives, if you're editing from an external device, you might want to consider putting your project on your local SSD. The P50 even has those M2 SSDs by default. Both editing from it and caching to it will go a lot faster. And once you've finished your project, you can then back it up to a slower external drive. Does that mean that you can't edit from an external drive or server? Of course you can, but it needs to be optimized. First, make sure that you've got a fast connection, either something faster than 2 gigabit internet or something like Thunderbolt. And if you're wondering, the Creator P50 has both a 2.5G internet connection and Thunderbolt 4. So if you hook up the right external drive, you can get blazing fast read and write speeds. So your external drive should either be an SSD or multiple hard drives that are configured in a RAID. This way your drives could work simultaneously, giving you a whole lot more speeds. At speeds I'm even getting 1 gigabyte per second transfer speeds to our hard drive RAID system in the office. Tip number 3, if you have an Nvidia graphics card, make sure to install the studio drivers instead of the game ready drivers. You can do this from the GeForce Experience app, now these drivers are designed for creative tasks such as editing or doing VFX. Alright, let's jump into Premiere Pro now. When sending clips to After Effects, make sure to first take a duplication of it and then sending it over to After Effects. Do your text tracking and when done, make sure to disable the video layer. Going back to Premiere Pro, the dynamic link comp now only shows the text tracking and the video clip remains in the Premiere timeline. Yes, this plays back and renders faster. The dynamic link is great, but it struggles with smooth playback and rendering. So tip number 5, if you have something with lots of effects, it's advised to first render it in After Effects to ProRes and then importing it into Premiere Pro. Basically, not using the dynamic link. Tip number 6, previews are your best friend. Make sure to double check your sequence settings that previews are set to QuickTime ProRes with the correct resolution. Now, whenever you're editing and need to preview view render in between, you'll notice that the line here on top turns green. And that means that you've got preview renders of these. Playback goes smooth, but the real magic lays in the export. You actually gain a button down here to make use of those previews. And with that option, you just make exporting go a hundred times faster. And something good to know is that Premiere actually still uses the processor more than the graphics card for rendering. The P50 comes with the latest 11th generation Intel Core i7, which they claim is 19% faster than the previous generation. And that's of course gonna help you with reducing that rendering time. Tip number 7, a bloated project is slow, not only when starting Premiere, but it also just makes things more unstable. When using video assets, you might have imported a folder with 100 lens flares, while only using 2 of them. Well, jump to the menu, choose edit and click on remove unused. Anything that is not in your timeline gets removed from the project. There, you've taken out the trash. Your parents are gonna be proud.
Tip number eight, Premiere or After Effects updates often come with new features. These new features aren't always optimized yet and could make Premiere Pro unstable and slower. If you're in such a situation and check out your Creative Cloud because next to each program, we can open up a drop down menu and choose to install other versions. So you could go back a couple of updates and see if that makes Premiere go better. Number nine, if your playback is not smooth, then work with proxies. Select your clips, right click and choose proxy, create proxies. Make sure that quick time as the format is selected and for the preset just pick the low resolution. A copy of your clips will be made which will have a much smoother playback. In Premiere's program monitor we're gonna bring the toggle proxies button to the toolbar. We can now easily switch between the original and the proxy and having it enabled will give you tremendously better playback. Now fortunately Premiere Pro does utilize the GPU more with playback and with the Nvidia GeForce RTX 3060 inside the P50 you'll have no problem. Even Red Raw 5k footage plays back super smooth. It's also great for 3D rendering and allows for multi-display setups at high resolutions. Next up, we're gonna go back to Windows and open up the power options. Then make sure that high performance is selected. If you're on a laptop, it could be set to power safe. But if you have your device plugged in, it's best to set it to maximum performance. Tip 11, at the bottom of the project window in After Effects, you can find this little rocket button right here. Make sure that it is enabled. By clicking on it, you have to select GPU acceleration. I found out that for some reason it sometimes it's disabled, so I double check that now and then. 12, very new to After Effects is multi-frame rendering. Basically, it's gonna use multiple cores of your CPU, rendering multiple frames simultaneously. To enable this option, go to preferences and under memory and performance, you'll find the new multi-frame rendering. Now, we did the test a while back and having it enabled drastically improved rendering speeds. 13, another new feature is speculative previews. Now it's not really gonna make your PC faster, but it will help a lot in your workflow. Basically, when you're not using your computer, After Effects is going to render in the background. You can enable or disable this feature from the menu, composition, preview. The rendering previews in After Effects actually goes to your RAM memory. So the more you have, the more that you can render. The P50 that I have has 32 gigs of dual channel RAM at 3200 megahertz. But there's also an option to choose for 64 if needed. Damn, your computer is on fire, guys. Tip number 14, to make your editing PC go faster, just like in Premiere, we can also so delete unused footage in After Effects. We can find this option from the menu, file, dependencies, and right here is remove unused footage. Tip number 15, let's head over to the preview panel in After Effects. You can actually choose how After Effects has to generate cache. We can set a lower frame rate or choose to skip frames and a lower resolution. Definitely if you're working in a 60 FPS comp, setting this to 24 or something helps speeding up the caching while you're doing your VFX magic. You can always change it if you desire for a better quality preview. And this brings me to the last one, both in After Effects and Premiere Pro, we can find effects with this icon next to them. It marks that this effect is GPU accelerated, or in other words, you can use this effect with real-time playback. Now, when possible, try to only use those effects, you'll save yourself a ton of trouble. And as a bonus tip, if you already have an MSI computer or thinking about getting the P50, it comes loaded with MSI Center, which is an application to not only monitor your hardware, but also to prioritize apps like Premiere Pro or After Effects or anything that you'd like. And this will allocate the system resources more to Premiere Pro, giving you that little extra performance as well. And with these 16 plus one bonus tip, I hope that you were able to get better performance while editing or that your workflow is a little bit more smooth now. And if you're still struggling, then maybe the MSI Trader P50 is something for you. And you can click the first link in the description down below to learn more about the Creator P50, as well as all the other MSI Creator products. So definitely make sure to check it out. Thank you MSI for the support and thank you for watching. And if you're starting a new school year, then I wish you all the best. And as always, stay creative. All right, let's, all right, let's throw the little Select your, select your clips. Blah. Select your clips. And having it enabled. Get the stool kapot gemaakt.